Hey everyone, uh, this week we are covering chapter 7, which is all about the crazy stuff you can do with strings. Beyond just regular concatenation or anything like that, we're actually able to take strings and edit them. You know, actually go into the internals and change things around. So that's what you have to look forward to this week. Um, this video is all about character arrays, which are essentially what strings really are sort of. Uh, we'll get into that. Now in this chapter I'm going a little bit rogue. Uh, I'm covering sections 7.1 and 7.6 from the focus on the concepts part of this chapter. So covering the length property and character arrays. All right so the first thing I want to do is talk about the length of a string. It's pretty easy. It's just the number of individual characters contained in that string. Uh, the control characters also count as one character, so things like spaces or tabs or new lines, pressing enter, you know, anything like that also count as one individual character. Uh, every string has a dot length property. Uh, that length property of a string, literal or variable, is always going to be some integer and it's going to be greater than or equal to zero. For example, uh, the string containing Santa Maria has a length of 11. There are 11 characters in that string. 5 for Santa, 5 for Maria, and 1 for the space between. The word blah has 4 characters in it, so its length property is 4. Uh, the string containing color, comma, space, iris has a length of 12. 6 for color, 4 for iris and two for the comma and space. And then of course the empty string has a length of zero. All right, so here is an example application that makes use of the string length. Uh, this application just collects product IDs. So we type in a five character ID, such as one, two, three, four, five, and we can add it to the list and it gets added, well, to our list of product IDs. Uh, it can be any five character string a, B, C, D, E is a valid product ID. It does get added in uppercase. Um, uh, but if I only type three characters, uh, blah, B, L, A, I get this message box. The ID must contain five characters. Or if I type more, blarg, for example, I also get a message that the ID must contain five characters. So all that's going on is it takes in the ID as a string from the text box and then checks if the length is exactly equal to five. If it is, then it adds that item to the list of product IDs right here. Uh, if it is not equal to five, if it's less or greater than five, uh, it pops up a message box, which was that fancy notification there. So that's just one way we can use the length property. All right, so now we can transition into the idea of character arrays. Um, strings essentially are like an ordered list of characters. They are a grouping of characters. Uh, we can think of them even as being an array of characters because an array is just an ordered collection of things where Everything inside of that array has a very specific position with a very specific associated index or location. Uh, and we'll actually talk more about arrays in chapter 8. But uh, in this case, we're just going to think of strings as being like character arrays. They are arrays that hold characters, sort of, kind of. There's a little bit of difference between a character array and a string array beneath the hood, but... We can think of it as being a character array. A string just holds a whole bunch of letters next to each other in memory. So there's a whole bunch of adjacent memory locations uh, where each location contains one single character. And that string itself is kind of grouping all of those characters together into one larger, well, string, you know, a, a larger piece of text in general. So for example, Blah groups the characters B, L, A, and H in memory next to each other and in that order. 
Uh, now note that I put this little C next to the uh, quotation B quotation. Uh, that C is actually a literal type character, sort of like the uh, uppercase D that we have for decimal. When you write a single character as a string in Visual Basic, but then you type the letter C next to it, that actually tells Visual Basic that you're talking about the char data type, not a string. Uh, a char is actually just a single character. Which is what this, uh, you know, B with the uh, little letter C afterwards represents. This represents the character B, uppercase B. If I just wrote B in quotes without the C, then it would be the string containing one character rather than just the character itself. So that C determines whether or not we're sort of wrapping the character into a string. If we put the C there, there's no string covering it, it's just the character itself exposed. But if we don't put this, the C there, then that character gets wrapped into the group that is the string, even though there's only one item in that string, if that makes sense. But that's how we differentiate a character from a string. They both have double quotes, but the character has a C after it, whereas the string does not have a C after it. Now, each character in the string has an associated index, uh, which is the position in that string. And we've talked about indices before with regards to tab index, where the tab index determines the order in which uh, things get focus when you hit tab. Well, this is pretty similar, except instead of determining, determining the order of focus, the index determines the order in which the, the uh, individual characters appear in the string. And this index starts at zero. So for example, the letter B in blog gets index zero, then L gets one, A gets two, and H gets three. Every time we talk about an index, it always starts at zero. For tab index, for strings, and for any of the other arrays that we will talk about in the future. That's really important to remember. So here's an example string. Uh, if we have the variable string city set it equal to Santa Maria, all lowercase, uh, its length is going to be 11 because it has 11 characters in it. And what I have is uh, at every single index from zero to 10 inclusive, uh, the character that appears at each index. So the length of string city is 11, but the highest index is 10. That's really important to remember because we start counting at zero when we're talking about indices like this, the highest index is going to be 10 for a string of length 11. This is really important to remember, so be sure you, uh, you feel comfortable with that idea. But every index is listed. So at index zero, we have S. At index one, we have A. We have, at index 2, we have n. At index 3, we have t. At index 4, we have a, again, different a's. Uh, they're the same character, but they are different actual instances of that character in the string. Index 5, we have the space, and so on and so forth. Um, I'll note that I didn't actually put the letter c at the end of this, but I did specify that this is a character and not a string at this point. So at index 0, we're getting the character s, not the string s. That's uh, another important distinction I want to make. These are all characters in this table right here. Now we're actually able to get the um, individual characters out of a string by doing what's called indexing into the string. And in Visual Basic, we index into a string by typing the name of the string, or actually the string literal itself, and then we put parentheses as if we were calling a uh, procedure, and inside of the parentheses we put the index that we want to get the uh, character of. So string city at index 0 is the character s. String city at the index 5 is the character space, uh, I can get the character A from index 1 or 4, or for that matter, 7 or 10, if I wanted to. But 
that's what I'm doing right here is I'm indexing into the string to get a character at the given index. When I index uh, into string city and provide the integer five, I get the fifth character as opposed, er, my apologies, the sixth character, the character at index five, um, I get the character at index five, which is the space character. Now, if I try to index into string city by giving the length of string city as its index in order to get the last uh, character in string city, that wouldn't work very well because what I'm passing in right here is string city dot length, but we know that string city dot length is 11. So I'm asking for the 11th, uh, sorry, the character at index 11 of string city, which means I'm actually asking for the 12th character of string city, but there are only 11 characters. The only valid indices are between zero and 10 inclusive, which means that there is no index 11 character. So you get this argument out of range exception. The argument out of range exception, I'll talk about it a little more, but it's a, another one of those runtime errors that we talked about previously, where it will crash your program because it doesn't know what to do with a character that doesn't exist. And if you're trying to use that character that doesn't exist, then bad things would happen. So it just has to crash your program instead. But what I want to take away from this is that if you want to get the last character from string city, then you cannot use string city dot length in order to get that last character, not directly at least. In this case, uh, I tried to get the character from index 11. Index 11 doesn't exist because there are only 11 characters. So 10 is the highest index. We're counting starting at zero, remember. That's really important to remember. So what I can do instead, if I want to get the last character, is I can just take the length and subtract one. And you can use this process for string city no matter what size string city is. No matter if it is, um, you know, Dallas, string city dot length minus one would be six minus one is five, which would give S in that city. Uh, you could do my hometown Nevada city. Uh, you could do, um, you could do one of those uh, Welsh cities that has a very, very long name and it would still work. And it works for every single possible city. You could do it with any string whatsoever. If you want to get the last character of a string, you can just type in the name of the string and then access the length property and just subtract one and you're safe because you know that the highest index is always one less than the length because of the fact that we started zero. So that's how you do that. If you ever want to get the last character in a string, that is how you go about doing it. Um, and then the last thing I really want to emphasize here is that when we index into our strings, I already said this, but I really want to make sure that it's emphasized. When we index into our strings, we get individual characters with the char data type, C-H-A-R. We don't get strings, we get characters. And that distinction is going to become pretty important. So I mentioned this before, but an argument out of range exception is a runtime error. It is thrown when you try to provide an index that doesn't ex exist in the string. And it also doesn't exist for um, other uh, types of arrays as well, but it's relevant for strings for this video. So when you give an index that doesn't exist in a particular string, uh, you get an argument out of range exception thrown and then your program crashes. So if I try to index into string name with some integer n, uh, it's going to throw that argument out of range exception when integer n is less than zero. So you can't have negative, uh, you cannot have negative values or when integer n is greater than or equal to uh, the 
string name dot length properties value. So for Santa Maria, um, right here, when I said string city dot length, that was going to be 11. It's greater than or equal to the uh, length. So that throws that argument out of range exception. Uh, if I had said string city at index negative one, that also would have thrown. And this holds true for the um, empty string as well. The empty string has length zero. So if you pass in the index zero, it's uh, greater than or equal to the length of the empty string. So that would give an argument out of range exception as well. Zero is not always guaranteed because you might be working with an empty string. Although if you try to access the zeroth index of a string and it uh, threatens to throw an argument out of range exception, that might be a good way of detecting when you have an empty string. Um, or you can just avoid the possibility of throwing an exception whatsoever and check to make sure that the index that you're passing in is greater than or equal to the length of this, uh, is not greater than or equal to the length of the string. All right, so I had talked about how indexing into strings gives chars, it gives characters, and I did mention that the distinction would be important. However, there's a lot of cases where the implicit type conversion from chars to strings is okay for us to do in a similar way to how we can implicitly convert integers to doubles, and that's okay for us to do. We're taking a very narrow data type, which is the char data type, it only holds one character, and it converts it to a string, which is a wider data type, which can hold one character, but it can also hold more characters. So we're not losing any information by converting from chars to strings. And it works even when option strict on is typed at the beginning of your program, and it always should be typed in the beginning of your program. So for example, um, I could put in a, uh, in a label, let's say label letter dot text equals string city um, at index zero. I'm assigning the first character of string city, which is a char to label letter dot text, which expects a string. And Visual Basic converts that character to a string and stores it in this text field, and that works totally fine. However, we can't convert strings to chars for a similar reason to why we can't convert doubles to integers, at least with option strict on. Uh, with it off, we can do the conversion and we lose a bunch of data and that's really bad and you should never try to convert a string to a char without being super, super careful about it. And we don't even have the tools to be super careful about it, so don't do it. And of course, you should also have option strict on always enabled anyway. So it shouldn't even be possible in your code. But converting strings to chars is bad because if you had, say, 200 characters in your string and you could try to convert it to a single char, all of a sudden you've lost 199 of them. And who knows what information was contained in there. So you don't want to do that. But, you know, it's still possible to go from chars to strings and it works fine if you're storing it into properties that take strings, sort of like this example right here. The problem is, is that chars cannot use string methods. And in fact, that implicit type conversion doesn't actually happen when you try to use string methods, just for the, the fact that Visual Basic can't assume that you're trying to convert it to a string. It will assume that, you're tr that, you're, that you think that there is a, let's say, two upper method for the char data type, but that you've made a mistake and it will be really helpful and try to remind you that. Um, it will assume that first before it actually assumes that you're trying to convert the character itself to a string. So if I tried to uh, call string city at index zero dot two upper, what happens is that Visual Basic first figures out string city 
at index zero. So it indexes into string city, gets the character at index zero, and then tries to call the two upper method and realizes that the char has no two upper uh, method whatsoever. So it gives a syntax error. Um, you can't actually use string methods like that, which means that you have to be uh, more careful when you're trying to use, uh, you know, if you're trying to get individual characters from strings, but you also want to use string methods from those characters, you have to be careful with how you do it. In fact, you have to convert chars to strings, and then you're able to use string methods. So for example, uh, to fix the syntax error above, you could say string city at index zero, and then call that uh, characters to string method to turn it into a string. And remember, you're creating an entirely new string right here. You're not modifying the character itself. You're not modifying string city at all. You've created a new string that contains the same character that string city at index zero did. So after you've created your new string with the two string method, then you can call to upper. And it works perfectly fine. And Visual Basic is smiling and everyone is happy. There are also other methods that we will sort of glance over. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of ways to convert characters to strings in order to then use those string methods on uh, one character strings rather than individual characters. All right, so here's another program. Uh, it, it's just called the first name program. All I do is I type in my first name, IRIS, and I list the characters in it, and it gets they get put into this lovely list box, like so. It's a very easy program. Um, it just takes in the name, uh, trims it. So if I had any extra spaces at the end like this, and look at this wonderful uh, text name dot text change event procedure, by the way. But if I list the characters, you'll see that you know I can click all these characters here, but there's no spaces at the end, even though there's a whole bunch of spaces right there. Or if I um, also put spaces at the beginning, all of those spaces are completely removed. It's just my first name like this. Um, now, what it's doing is it is running a for loop uh, starting, you know, it, it has this int index uh, variable, which is a very great name for looping through an array like this, in our case, a character array, uh, as integer starting at zero and ending at the length minus one, because remember that the last index of a string is the length of the string minus one, like I talked about before. And then for each one of those ind indices, it is adding the character at that index into the, uh, into the list box into the list boxes items collection. And there's some, I believe, some conversion to a string from, from a character going on in this whole process, but that's implicit inside of the um, add method. Not inside of the add method, but as part of the uh, implicit type conversion so that the add method can happen. But that's what we're doing right there, is we are indexing in uh, for every possible index from zero to the length minus one and one character at a time adding that character in as an individual item in the list and that's all we that's uh, what we get out of it when we look at the characters now um very briefly i do want to talk about trim right here trim was being used to remove the spaces before and after the name We'll actually talk a little bit more about trim in this chapter. You'll you'll get a little bit more of a uh, idea of how powerful this uh, function can be. So look forward to that. All right. Well, that is character arrays. Uh, this video was all about introducing a new way of thinking about strings to you. I hope you find this useful. Um, you know, I wanted. I know it's out of order for how the textbook talks about strings in this chapter, but I wanted to introduce character arrays right away because I think it gives a 
really clear picture about how indices work with a string and how a lot of the other methods that we will be talking about throughout this chapter actually work with those indices and affect the characters inside of this array that is the string. So uh, if you're having trouble with this concept, I, I would say that you should really try to ask, ask some questions or try to figure out for yourself how, you know, how these ideas work. Try to really internalize this idea of the characters being in an array sort of listed out like that in cells you could think of it as um, and these adjacent storage lockers that are all right next to each other all under the same name which is the name of the string all that kind of stuff um that's the idea that i want to have going forward with the rest of the methods when we talk about how to we are indexing into the string or working with indices in the string and all that kind of stuff so it's very important that you feel comfortable with this um so feel free to reach out if you have any questions before moving on <laughs>